Well, greetings. Here is one of two, actually, yeah, one of two. There's a pair of 135A JBL that is found, this particular one was found in, uh, came out of an L45 flare. Uh, there's another big consumer version that it belongs to also, but it's also the the consumer version of the 2230A, which was found in the first version of the 4350 studio monitor. So this one, uh, paint was flaking on one of the frames, so I decided to repaint the frame. Magnet didn't need it because it was pretty clean, but I did the full service teardown cleaning and recharge of the magnet. And this one is kind of heavy is what it is. This has the white Aquaplaz cone. And this is uh, quite a process to build because how I do it, I take a 2225 style cone and I cut off the cloth surround and then replace it with the correct radius foam surround that is from the 2235, uh, 2234, and the later LE15s. Because here is the original cone assembly that came out of it. And it was pretty rough. It had, uh, it has the lancelloy surround which basically just turns rock hard and brittle you can see though that cracks and this got coated with everybody's favorite material silicone to try to fix it uh, but my reproduction recon kit is pretty darn good this one is from 19, let me turn it over. I gotta manipulate the camera and 1973. Looks like it says December 6, 1973. So the coil is in good shape. Spider's kind of sunken, worn out. But there's the new reproduction of the 135A slash 2230A. Free air resonance is about 25 hertz right now. It has this particular one. It's got basically the feel small specs of a 2235. It has enough aquaplaws on here to measure the moving mass of the 2235. Uh, and it's got a 2235 style voice coil. So the voice coil winding is a little bit longer. As a matter of fact, I've got another, the other, the mate to it right here. So you can see the voice coil winding length. This one is three quarters or 0.75. This one I think is 0.63, five eighths, something like that. Uh, so it's got a little bit better excursion. A little bit more low end. And that one's going to get put into this frame right here. These frames are kind of interesting because uh, there's a recess in the frame here that's about a sixteenth of an inch deep. And it's about an eighth of an inch wide. And the lancelloy surrounds fit into that recess. And they stopped doing that. Uh, they stopped doing that in the 70s, I guess it was. But JBL supplied a piece of cardboard, adhesive backed cardboard that would, would fill up this groove. Well, I don't have that. So I had to kind of improvise. And what I ended up doing was using some hard felt and kind of cut it to that edge and then trimmed it. And then I coated it with good old Elmer's glue to give it the stiffness. 
and rigidity and it turned out pretty good this speaker I'll put the sweep generator on it we can see the where the free air resonance is I'm just gonna hook it right up to the solder lugs so there it goes That chuffing is when I. Uh, that chuffing is the air sound that comes through the vent, the vent hole in the back, caused by the dome being in place. But you can see here the. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to have to tilt this up a little bit. So the free air resonance is at the lowest current draw. I've done that before in some other videos. And this, it's showing about 25 hertz if you go up. Current draw goes up, you go down, you find your target. Minimum is about 15.15 amps. And you can see on the scale of the sweep generator, it's it's at about 25 hertz, and it'll go a little bit lower down to 20. So anyway, uh, these turned out uh, really good. I think customers customers going to be thrilled with these. They're going off to Arizona, so you got to do the other one now. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.